Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Inside of today's video, we're going to be taking a look at our Queso Cup matches versus AC Milan Clash, which happened a few days ago. Uh, as I said on my channel yesterday, apologies for not uploading it yesterday. There was a bunch of problems with recording. I couldn't get it to work properly. And then I had a bunch of scrims and practices. So really had to focus on that rather than uploading yesterday. But we're going into it today, going over some of our games. And also, a little side note, I actually got uh, a free name change from Supercell. They actually changed it to TD for tea drinkers. I thought that was uh, pretty cool. Literally woke up this morning and they changed that. But yeah, without further ado, let's jump into the first game. Alright guys, so jumping into the first game, the bans for this whole match against uh, SK... Well, not SK. It said SK on the overlay. That actually threw me off then. Uh, AC Milan Clash, of course. There were four bans. There were Jesse, Ruffs, Mr. P and Stu. So Stu was actually well in play, but obviously banned because of how overpowered he is. So I'm just going to be showing a win and a loss from every single set that we played in, just going over it. So straight away... Uh, they actually won one game. Well, this is the second game in split hot zone. They won the first one. They used the exact same combat as they're using on the screen. We thought they were going to change. We didn't really expect a poker double tank. Not many people actually run this strategy on split anymore. And just as you can see, they've just got so much of the percentage. I think we had like an Edgar instead of a Gale. We switched to a Gale to try and help with the tanks a little bit more. But that first engagement with the Poco heals, with the BB heals, it's just basically impossible with a Pam actually defend that so they just easily take that game to us and one percent left there's no way we're going to be able to defend it so see gear just comes in here there's literally no way i'm going to be able to stop him with a pam so they're going to be able to take the next game so they're currently 2 0 up in this set let's hop into the next game all right guys hopping into the next game so as you can see 2 0 currently in the set so they've gone for the same comp again so some crazy mind games from clash for going for the poker tanks so we brought out a rico but rico's not really the best against a BB and a Poco because the BB can basically just hide behind this wall like she's doing and could just basically two-shot me so easily. So they take me down with ease there and Casey's done a good job to finally break uh, that little wall. Obviously, we didn't really play too much against Poco BB, so we didn't really know how to kind of counter it down that lane, but now we really know to just break it up fully. So I chain my supers here, managing to get a Poco. I did aim my super towards the Poco because that is the most annoying thing. With getting that zone, you can see how much percentage they've actually got. And I can't actually show it. I'm showing this from the Clash perspective because it's uh, gone out of my battle log. Obviously, it's been like two days now. So that's why you've seen it from this perspective. But once Rico gets this lane, there's basically nothing that can actually touch him, especially when it's not broken up like this. Like every, every single brawl up pushing up against him, especially like a tank. There's literally no way you're going to be able to get it unless there's like a tick shooting at you down the lane to press you back or like a Mr. P or something like that. But with their comp, they've just got to basically walk into their death unless they flank around the right hand side. But Tom's doing a good job of keeping it that lane. Chaos actually gets some good time there, but some good shots from me and Casey were able to keep him off. Casey's going to help Tom get this lane. And look how close we are from actually catching up. We was down so much. All of them go over that uh, side because that's going to be the way they're going to be capturing our, well the other zone is by flanking but we managed to get a nice wipe there and kill them and get them off the zone so that's actually going to be hot zone they managed to take the last game actually but as i said i'm just going to be showing a couple of games let's jump into the next one all right guys now jumping into gem grab so currently again the overlay is a little bit wrong it is 1-1 in this set uh, in this point of time they actually went for a Gina Max Sandy combination against the combo that we went. And to be honest, that comp can do okay against this. But with the certain bands in play, this is by far the best comp on Hard Rock. Mind you, just basically this covers everything. You've got the 8 bit in case there's any aggro brawlers. You'll bar an 8 bit strategy. Everyone knows how OP that is. And even a Sprout, even if it's like an enemy Mortis or some aggro brawlers, the Sprout can just sit on the 8 bit turret and deal like 2k damage per shot. Yeah, this comp's just so, so broken. So you can see Chaos is doing an amazing job down the left-hand lane. He's just putting shots into us over and over again. And obviously, in the matchups, Sprout is going to absolutely destroy 8-bit in the open. But Gear's done an amazing job of getting his turret really uh, aggro. I think Casey actually uh, unfortunately went down when his turret was up. So they're able to get the 8-bit turret down. That's going to be like the main focus throughout this for uh, Tom on our side of things. He's going to be focusing on it a bit, getting that turret down. And then that's what the enemy team is going to be doing as well. So as you can see, they've just completely destroyed it. Uh, destroyed us inside of this game. Literally not even close. So they're going to be 2-1 up currently in this set. Let's hop into the next game. All right, guys. Jumping into the final game of Gem Grab. As you can see, it is currently 2-2 in this moment. So we took some adjustments after we just got completely destroyed. Basically, with this comp in a mirror, they uh, just wrecked us two games in a row. We had a little look 
at what went wrong and adjusted. So the main thing when I was going wrong, I do go down straight away there, by the way, some nice shots from Chaos and Lenin, was that we was allowing Sprout to push up into our grass. So we told KC to go a little bit wider. We also told Tom to go wide as well and do the exact same today, right bit. So a bit of a uh, slow start from us, but not the end of the world. So still getting some shots onto gear there. Tom playing really well, really aggressive. So again, Chaos is in that spot. So Casey's done a good job of keeping his a bit turret further back. The main reason for this, if he would have put it closer to the Sprout, Sprout could have just destroyed it. So put it as far away as Sprout for as long as possible. So Chaos actually traps himself in there, uh, which looked like an okay play, but Casey just recognizes straight away that I can catch up to him and take him down in time. So really well played. That basically what clutched it up in the end. And then Tom, as always, is just going absolutely ham with his throws. Everyone knows how much Tom likes his throwers, his uh, tick, his barley, his sprout is all really, really OP. So a nice aggro turret from KC. But in this moment, I remember thinking, oh no, 8-bit turret is down and we only need a few, one gem. Um, it's going to take us literally forever to get it. But luckily, KC actually cycles his super really well, which allows us to just get so much control. You can see here, most of the, well, the majority of what I'm just going to be doing is just healing KC. I'm going to be sitting in the 8-bit turret and just healing KC because I'm going to be doing so much healing potential. Uh, Potentage. Um, potential. That's what I was trying to say. I don't even know what word was trying to come out of my mouth then. But anyways, we're able to get some good pressure. Nice wall, I think, from Tom there to get... Uh, well, enable us to get the final gem. And just like that, we're able to pressure him back enough. So in a mirror matchup like this in Hard Rock Mine, it's really, really weird to watch. Because there's so many Sprout Wars everywhere. There's so many A-Bit Turrets. So much healing. There's a lot of spam. But we're able to take home the gem grab set right there. Let's hop into the next game. All right, guys, now jumping into the Brubble set. So I'm showing the first game because a few of the other losses that we got were just completely a mismatch line in terms of we got hard counted too much. No real point showing it because basically as soon as the match started, we knew we were going to lose because of how much of a hard counter it was. So Chaos has done an amazing job to take down Tom and Casey here. So my job is here just to try and cycle my super as much as possible. We actually get caught here with a nice... <clears throat> gadget from chaos there you can see i'll probably grouped up a little bit too close to the uh rosa there and luckily enough casey actually uh kills i think the enemy max there and just giving us enough time uh to actually get them down so really clutch moments from uh kc i'm able to catch ye off guard and get the kill so i'm only a couple of shots away from my super already i noticed that chaos is pushed up here so what i'm going to be doing keep my distance but get my super back instantly as you can see, I've basically worked my way to another super. The time gear has got one. So playing really well here. Uh, KC and Tom collapsing on the enemy team. Gia yeah, nearly somehow manages to get that away. No idea. If we choke that, that would have been absolutely crazy. So we actually take uh, the 1-0 lead here. So I'm just trying to wonder where things went wrong. I think gear went from the middle. I probably should have gone from the middle with KC as well. But I do get my super again. Uh, winning the 1v1 engagements. gear has got his super, but Chaos is just destroying. He's playing so good as a Rosa. Lenane nearly manages to sneak that in, but regardless, he manages um, to score. So I think the only thing that went wrong was I think Tom went to pop super and just got destroyed before he popped super. So it's really unfortunate. He took so much damage before he was actually able to select his super, which uh, wouldn't, obviously it would have mattered because he would have stayed alive. But Casey gets destroyed in the mid there. Not often you actually see that. I think he stepped a little bit too far up and they're just able to collapse in on us there's no way casey can defend against three people so they're going to be taking the first game of brubble there let's hop into the next game all right guys so jumping into the next game so it's currently uh well this is literally the next game after the one we commentated on because these are the best two in the brubble set so i'll show you now but anyway we've gone for a bit of a weirder comp we've gone for a cult b strategy because we really thought they were going to go with like poker double tank or some tankier options because rosa is so good on this map a lot of people like to go poker double tank here in competitive especially with a jesse band like clash tend to ban jesse it's not really a brawler that most teams actually ban but for clash i think they may do it so they can play a lot of tankier combos but anyway we get really nice goal there as you see tom pushed up managed to get so much control just from him pushing up the lane allows me to pass it to him and we score so really good control from us it was really important for us to get their first goal because to be honest they had the better comp because they have a max and sandy max and sandy should just be able to shred through all of us once you get the max sped up and the sandy sped up if they cycle supers well enough it should just destroy it be on colt because we just don't have the scanning potential but anyway we leave the ball in a really awkward position and lenane's able to dash in and score so we should really be knowing that lenane is a really really good max and he's amazing at brubble 
And he always manages to score in all these awkward situations. So we can't really give him the chance to do that. I think I did have the wrong stop power. I don't think the shield stop power is actually uh, good. Uh, to be honest, I think I feel like the other one's way better. So I'll probably be making that adjustment anyway. But I managed to get a nice tap on Chaos. Keep them low enough. And yeah, Max in mid should really be able to counter a B as well. Because Max is just so agile. But I get really nice 3k shot on gear. That could have been really bad if it didn't hit that. It probably would have got some kills. But me, Casey and Tom able to take that brubble game right there let's hop into the next set all right guys now jumping into siege bot drop i nearly forgot the name of this map actually so we actually lost the brubble set three to one as i said if you guys want to watch it uh there's a bunch of vods on twitch overall like i think uh teddy streamed it and other people like that but in terms of actually comps yeah there's no way we're winning it so no point kind of showing it and we've gone for the amber crow baron strategy they've actually gone for a poco instead of the amber so really interesting here again a lot of people on bot drop have been going like triple healing a lot jesse counters that combination so with jesse banned again we weren't really too sure what to run against this type of combination so we picked the crow because crow can be really good against healing because i think it gives like a 25 percent healing debuff so crow really good in the meta at the moment as you can see both teams going crow as well for the slow just overall control. So Crow's also a really good counter. I think I already said it. But anyways, to Byron. Because you can also jump on a Byron. No way Byron can take Crow down quick enough. Unless he's got his super. And just that debuff in general. Just really, really good. So what we're doing here. Is that we're making sure that we're not getting a robot. Giving them the robot. So it's really well played from us. Good bolt management. I remember. Dre uh, not Drake. Tom at saying in VC. He was like managing the bolt. So saying like how many we can actually pick up. I and mean, basically we want to be in a good enough position where we've got a lot of bolts for the last robot. Uh, you can see by their comp, they've got a Poco, they've got a Crow. They're not going to get a lot of damage on offense. So that's one thing you got to bear in mind with Siege. You've got to look at your enemy comp and think, oh, can they get a lot of damage with this push? Uh, especially because they have to go all in. They know they can't get the last robot. So that's kind of a thing that you're taking into consideration. So like on other maps like Nuts and Bolts and maps like this, if they have like a barley and a sprout for example you can't really afford to get last because they could probably like one push it with the amount of damage you do but with a poco as i said there's no way gonna do damage so we know we've got the last a robot only around i think nine maximum 10 bolts can spawn and that's if you pick literally every single one up without them being contested so we knew we had this robot now we have to do 50 percent so they've, they've really got bad defense they've got bad offense bad defense a bit. i think they were planning to get every single robot so it's a good job we allowed them not to get the first robot. So good kill from us to get the kill on Crow. And there's no way they're going to be able to defend that. So we actually take the first game of Siege pretty comfortably there. Let's hop into the next game. Alright guys, so going into the final game of Siege that I'm showing. We did end up losing overall 3-1. So I'm going to be showing this one because I felt like it was really good to show the triple heal go off. So even though we've got an Amber... To deal with the amount of healing they've got i don't think it really actually dealt with it that well because they've got so much healing they've got the poco uh poco's got three form uh three forms of healing pam has her turret and her gadget for healing jean's got that magic puffs star power it's just insane the uh, triple heal strategy on this map we actually went so how it kind of went in terms of us going to one up as you can see in the sets at the moment they did bring out a piper to counter our crow they destroyed us went one one then we went a Pam to counter their Piper. We destroyed them as well because Piper really can't deal with the heals. So leading into it 2-1, they've gone for the triple heal, as I said, to kind of counteract, I think, the Amber somehow. I don't really understand how Amber doesn't shred through this, but it must be pretty evident now that Amber can't deal with this strategy because literally Tom was putting in so much work to these guys and they just wasn't dying. They really weren't dying. This triple heal is so, so broken on bot job. It's kind of crazy. And as I said, the best real counter to it is a Jesse. A Jesse with that slow just destroys this comp. Literally destroys it. Like a B, I don't... We tried a B before against Triple Hill. Didn't really work because they can just slow to chip me down out of range. Klet is also a good pick. That's what happened in the final set. We went Klet, but they went a Sprout and just destroyed us. But I feel like a Klet could deal with this. Uh, but yeah, going into... I've not really spoke about the comps too much. So it's going into the final round here. But they've just got so much control with the healing. I can't really push any of them back. Maybe Tom could have pushed over with us, but just after the defense, I think we just pushed our lanes solo. So maybe a bit of a mistake there. Maybe we could have just all gone down one lane. But overall, they've just kept control so, so well. With this triple heal, so painful to face. 
because we just really could not do anything about it. So they're going to be able to take the Siege game. There's no way we're going to be able to defend this. And as I said, they took home the whole series. So some really intense, close games against Clash. GG to them. They definitely uh, deserve to beat us in the end. But as I said, really, really close. It always is against Clash. All right, guys, it's going to be the end of today's video. Hope you enjoyed some competitive gameplay. Let me know what you want to see on the channel tomorrow leading up to our monthly finals on Sunday. So obviously, again, a lot of preparation going towards that. So not really in the mindset to focus too much on content creation because I'm trying to focus on competitive. But let me know what you want to see tomorrow uh, and I'll be sure to do it. So uh, that's going to be it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you all next time.